this problem's a little different from some of the other ones that we've done because it's got two masses to deal with instead of one, okay? But it follows all of the same rules. You just have to kind of double everything. Okay, so it's, we got two boxes. They're connected by a lightweight cord and resting on a table. <clears throat> okay, so other situations where this physics might apply is like two cars connected by a tow rope or something like that. Or um, maybe when you were a little kid learning how to ski, your parents tethered you to them. Have you guys ever seen that? Like the little kid tethered to the adult. Okay, so two masses connected and some tension in a, in a string of some kind. Okay, so got this box here in front and we'll call that M1. We like to label everything and make sure that we are being specific about which mass we're talking about. And we're told that M1 is 10 kilograms. Okay, then there's a cord between them, and the other mass is 12. We have some force applied. And this problem says FP, I usually say FA. So the force applied is 40 newtons. And that's the force that's pulling the whole system. Okay, we'll call this M2. And they would like us to find the acceleration. And they would also like us to find the tension that's in the cord. Okay, so this tension right here. All right, here's the deal. Tension is the same throughout this cord. All right, so the tension force on this box is the same as the tension force on this box, but they're in what? They're opposite directions. Okay, so this, the tension on this box is acting in that direction. Tension on this box, that direction. Okay, so this is a very typical Newton's law problem, all right? And if all of them follow the same situation, and that's FBD and 2L. Okay, so FBD, what's that? Free body diagram. So this time we just we have to do two FBDs. So we'll do one over here for M1, and we'll do another one over here for M2. Okay, and let's analyze all the forces on these. <clears throat> We're going to do the whole problem in symbol form first. And then at the end, we'll plug in our numbers. And you're going to get a lot of problems where the whole thing is in symbol form. Okay, so let's do the easy forces first. We got M1G right there. And there's nothing pulling up or down on this mass. So... We simply just have normal force equal and opposite. Okay, then in this direction we've got tension. And we don't know the value of tension, so we can't really compare our um, we can't really compare how big it is to the force applied and draw it proportional, but we do know that the force applied is bigger than tension. Why do we, why do we know that, okay? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, and, okay. And the other thing is, well, it probably should say this. What, it, in this problem, it's being implied that, what, what about the surface? frictionless okay so usually it would say I should probably add that in but let's put that here <coughs> okay so it's a frictionless surface All right now you're gonna have a lot of problems where there is friction okay the next well the next page I think has got one where you got friction involved so in that one I would just add the force of friction working with tension over here 
Okay, just be part of my FBD. Okay, then over here, I'm going to draw a force applied bigger than tension. And that's my first FBD. Okay, for M2, I'm going to draw this arrow a little bigger than M1G. Normal is going to be a little bigger than the other one. We try and draw them proportional if we can. And we've got tension. And for M2, the tension's in the opposite direction. <coughs> the tension is actually what's going to cause M2 to, to, to speed up. And if there was friction, again, I would draw that right here. Okay, that'll come later. Okay, so that's the FBD part. On an FRQ, you'd probably get points for having some good FBDs. Okay, and they're easy points. You just got to analyze all the forces. Now remember the rules, they got to be arrows, they got to be labeled. Okay, what are our other FBD rules? No X and Y components on them, nice. <coughs> no F net, okay, and only force vectors. All right, question? Well, <coughs> yeah, that would be okay. <coughs> And usually we'll just do it in symbol form and then off to the side we might do something with those numbers like we're going to do in this problem but you wouldn't get like counted down if you put 40 newtons there okay so now this is kind of the new part n2l all right now we've got to do a newton's second law expression for each fbd okay so again let's do m1 and m2 Okay, so for M1, here's how we do a N2L. We just say F net is equal to, <coughs> and then in symbol form, we deal with the F net for each object. So what do the vertical forces do here? Cancel. We don't have to deal with any kind of vertical F net. So the horizontal, the force applied is winning, so I can say my F net is the force applied minus tension. Okay, it's tug of war, just like at the assembly yesterday. Seniors won that tug of war, right? There, so F net was in what direction? F net was south, right? We were on the rug, and nobody had traction. Okay, so we got we got excuses from the juniors about rugs. <laughs> hey, well, you know, okay, okay, let's not get into names here, all right? Okay, back to the problem. M2 is going to be a very simple F net expression. Okay, so F net is just equal to tension. All right, and those are your N2L statements. Now we're going to go further and be a little bit more specific because we need acceleration as part of the as part of the deal here. So here I'm going to say F net is M1A because this is the F net just for mass one. So M1A equals force applied minus tension. Okay now over here we got M2A equals just tension. All right, and notice acceleration and tension are what we want to solve for. So here I got acceleration and tension. Here I got acceleration and tension. Can I use either of those equations to get it? No. Not really, because I got two unknowns in each equation. Okay, so what I have to, I got to think further. What should I do? Just like cry? Yeah. Yes. Go home? Okay, no, you're going to do what your math teacher taught you to do, and that is to, well, okay, good, there's, good, there's two ways to look at it. You said sub, and you said systems of equations. Okay, two equations, two unknowns, that'll, that'll get us the answer. So, the easiest way, I think, is to just add these equations together. Just combine them. You can take two equations and literally just add them together, which is weird but the laws of math allow us to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna say M1A 
plus M2A <coughs> is equal to force applied minus tension plus tension. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. All right. We love canceling stuff in physics. So we just got rid of tension. Okay. All right. Now, next step, I'm going to take al or use an algebra trick and get acceleration out of those terms. What's that? Okay, it's called factoring. Now, if I multiply it back in, that's distributing. Okay, isn't that so cool that algebra has uses? I mean, it's not just to torture you. Look at this. We're going to find the acceleration of boxes on a table. Yes. A frictionless, a frictionless table. <laughs> okay, so last step. The acceleration is equal to the force applied. And I'm just going to divide this whole quantity of masses over. Okay, and in a lot of problems, that will we'll stop there. That will be the end of the problem. That will be the answer. We won't even have numbers to deal with. Okay, here we have some numbers to plug in. So we're going to say 40 divided by... those added together. So I got a 10 and a 12, so I got 40 over 22. And I know you guys know how to put, punch that in your calculator, so I'll just tell you the answer. And if you don't believe me, you can do it. That's fine. It's 1.8. <coughs> okay, now we just did quite a bit of work to get that answer. Look at all that. I mean, it's really pretty. It is an impressive display of algebra for sure. But does anybody see a super easy shortcut to get that same answer? What did we do in the end? We just did F net equals MA. All right. And we took the total mass of the system and we divided by what? Force applied. And what can we just totally neglect? <laughs> yes, we just we can we just we can just bypass tension. Okay. Now the reason why I make you guys do it the hard way is because what happens when I add friction into these? What happens when these things have friction and you're on an inclined plane, like at the ski area? And there's wind resistance. And you had another kid, so then there's three masses to deal with. And two tensions. Okay, you guys see where I'm going with this? Yeah, you better not do that. Okay, now on the extra credit, there's some stuff like that. Okay? There's one with three masses on the extra credit. Okay, so I teach you the, uh, the hard way to do this, all right, for that reason, and for the fact that we now need to solve for tension, too. So we're going to need one of these equations. Okay, now which equation should we use? Like that one. How about that easy one? Yeah. yeah, okay. Now the only thing hard is make sure you use the right mass. So we're going to say for tension, M2A equals T. <coughs> so 12 times 1.8 equals T. And we get a tension equal to 21.8 newtons. All right, any questions? I'm kind of confused on how you can turn F net into M2A. How I can turn F net into M2A, okay. So um, anytime you have F net, whatever mass it applies to, you can always just sub in MA. I mean, I could have just skipped this step right here. Okay, but it's good to show as much work as possible, especially on FRQs and labs. Okay. All right, what other questions? <coughs>